احمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين اللهم الهمنا رشدا وعزنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته سوره الملك this surah was revealed in makka it has 30 verses two stanzas it is the 67th by the order of arrangement and the 77th by the order of revolution it takes its name uh, as al mulk is in the very first sentence and the very first verse of the surah regarding the period of revolution the subject matter and the style of the surah it indicates that it is one of the earliest surahs to be revealed in makkah the theme and the subject is that the teachings of islam they have been introduced briefly in their verses and the people living in heedlessness they have been aroused from their slumber in a very effective way in the first five verses man has been made to realize that the universe in which he lives it is a most well organized fortified kingdom in which he cannot detect any fault whatsoever and uh, it's been explained that nothing uh, came into existence without the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is controlling administering and ruling it and uh, the whole of this is just entirely in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also above all that he has not created this whole universe and its creations without any purpose the purpose is that in this he it is a test it is a test to see who can do righteous good deeds and good conduct in his life and then in verse from 6 to 11 there is a dreadful consequence of disbelief and the people have been told by allah that uh, by sending his prophets they have been warned of the consequences and those who will believe and obey the uh, messengers they will be successful otherwise they will be doomed with this dreadful consequence verses number 12 to 14 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly explained that the creator cannot be unaware of his creations and he is aware of every open and hidden secrets and therefore all the people should avoid evil fearing the accountability in front of the lord of the worlds verse number 152 uh, 15 to 23 Allah is uh, the verses they explain the common truths of the daily occurrences and uh, which are worthy of much attention and Allah has invited us to consider them seriously to recognize the attributes power and authority of Allah like Allah says look at the earth look at the birds that fly above you look at the air look at your own means and resources and uh, these things when a person sees should be enough to make them aware of the actual truth of the creations and in verse number 24 to 27 it has been said that you have ultimately to appear before your god in any case and it is not for the prophet to tell you the exact time and the date of the event his duty is only to warn you beforehand of its inevitable occurrence and then in verses 28 to 29 replies have been given to what the disbelievers of makkah had to say against prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the conclusion uh, people have been asked the question and they have been uh, left to ponder over the truth to recognize the powers the authority and control and uh, most of all the sovereignty of allah almighty the basic uh, as far as the excellence of surah mulk is concerned uh, we learn from traditions that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is a surah in quran which will intercede for its reciters on the day of judgment until they enter the jannah and uh, we also learn from the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he used to recite surah mulk and surah uh, alif lam mim as sajda before going to bed 
And the excellence of recitation of Surah Mulk before going to bed is basically just not the verses. It's not just the importance of reciting a few verses. Actually, Surah Mulk has a very powerful style of reminding uh, about fear of hereafter. So you can realize that if a person goes to bed every night after reciting these verses, which are going to remind the person every night of uh, the fear of hereafter and of the life hereafter and the importance of uh, preparing for the eternal abode, obviously the person will become a God-fearing, a righteous and a pious person and will succeed in uh, reaching the destination of Jannah, inshallah. Now, uh, before uh, reciting the verses, I think I would uh, want to go through a few traditions regarding the importance of the fear of hereafter, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly announced. Allah says, قُلْ مَتَعُ الدُّنْيَا كَلِيلٌ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْكَى that is the possessions of these of this worldly life. They are very they are very mild and they are very trivial. Actually, what remains eternally is what is the life of hereafter. And Allah also announces in Quran, that you tend to prefer what is in this worldly life, although better and eternal is what the life hereafter. And what we need to do, despite this, that Allah has said that this is your preferences and these are your priorities that you prefer the worldly life. But regarding the worldly life, Allah guides us that Almanu wal Banuna, Zina al Hayat al Dunya wal Baqiyat al Swalihat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us, help us all acquire the fear for hereafter and prepare for our eternal abode. You know what our priority should be and the cry of all hearts and all souls should be Allahumma la Aisha illa Aisha al-Akhira. Allah, there is no joy other than the joy of hereafter. Because it has been reported in a tradition in Muslim that Prophet said that this life, this worldly life is how important it is in the sight of Allah. Prophet said, have this world been to Allah equal to the world, equaling to the wing of a mosquito, he would not have given a sip of water to the infidels. So uh, this worldly life is what? It is to Allah even less important than the wing of a mosquito. And it has been reported in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said that the likeness of this world as compared to the hereafter is that someone of you took out his finger after dipping it into a river and then saw how much water it had brought with itself. So you can compare the water sticking to the finger is what is, is this worldly life and its provisions and the water, the endless fathoms and fathoms of water of the rivers and of the seas is what is the life hereafter. It has been reported by Hazrat Jabir anhu in Muslim, <coughs> that Prophet Sallallahu once, he passed by a dead young goat and uh, he asked his companions that will any one of you like to buy this dead kid for a dinam? They answered that they would not. And then Prophet Sallallahu said that I swear in the name of Allah that in Allah's sight, in this, this world is as hateful and as worthless as this de dead kid is in your sight. So this is the importance of the life of this world as compared to hereafter. Remember, this life is short and hereafter is eternal. This is temporary, that is a permanent abode. This is inferior, that is superior. Hereafter, we know, we learn that death will be brought in the form of a white ram and it will be slaughtered and then it will be announced that you will stay here forever. You will stay young, you will not get old, you will be healthy, you will never fall sick, you will always stay here, you will never be asked to leave, and you will always live and you will never die. Bounties of this world as compared to the bounties of Jannah, the palaces of Jannah with one, one brick of gold and the other brick of silver with pearls and rubies and emeralds in between, and the worries and the tensions of this world as compared to the worries and the tensions of hereafter, 
we learn from a tradition that there will be a person who will be blessed who will be blessed with all forms of bounties of Allah. And he would have hardly any tensions and hardly any hardships and crises which touched him in his life. And what happens, what will happen in on the day of judgment will be that he will be all this blessed person. He will be made to have just one dip in one pool of hellfire. And then he will be asked, how are you? What is your condition and state? He will say, me? It is as if no blessing has ever touched me. And then the Allah, uh, Prophet Sallallahu explained the condition of a person who will be like one of the most deprived person of this earth. And he had, he will have like hardly any blessings in this life, one of the most deprived person on this earth. And when he will be on the day of judgment, given just one tip in one pool of Jannah and asked, what is your condition and status? He will say, me, as if like no hardship or crisis or trial ever touched me. So this is the importance and the comparison of the bounties of this world and the bounties of hereafter and the tensions and the trials and the hardships and the crises of this world as compared to the crises and the torments of the world and the life hereafter. Prophet Sallallahu said, has been reported in Musnad Ahmad that whoever loves the world shall damage his hereafter and whoever loves the hereafter shall damage his world. So they cannot go parallel, you know. Well, akhiratu khairu wa abka is what we have to make as our preferences in life and our priorities in life. It has been reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that the world is accused and what it contains is ex ex accused except the remembrance of Allah and what he likes and, and the teachers and what it is taught. Similarly, it has been reported by Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that is there anyone who walks on water and his feet do not get wet the companions said that it cannot be. So Prophet Sallallahu added that in the same way, the worldly minded person cannot remain free from sins. Who is intent on gaining. Remember, any person who is intent on gaining the worldly players cannot remain safe from sins. Ultimate. Any person ultimately guiding and focusing and striving and struggling for his destination in Jannah is the person who will be able to stay, stay away from sins easily. And it has been reported in Mustad Ahmad and Tarimzi that it was said that when Allah loves anyone, he makes him avoid the world, uh, avoid the world as you make a patient avoid water. Similarly, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed and advised one of his companions getting getting or grasping his shoulders and he advised Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar that live in this world as if you were a stranger as if you were a stranger or, or live in this world as if you were a traveler similarly we learn from a tradition that Prophet Sallallahu said in uh, it has been reported by Abu Huraira and Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu said, by him who has my life in his hand, if you knew what is known to me, if you knew what is known to me, that is the terrible events in the life you're after and on the day of resurrection, you would laugh less and you would weep more. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has has promised us in Surah Tawbah, Inna Allah hashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. That Allah has bought from the believers their lives and their wealth for what? In lieu of the gardens of the jannah to be for them. Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reports, that uh, he was asked that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, tell me who is the wisest and who is the most far-sighted of men? And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi replied that he who remembers death much and makes the greatest preparation for it, they alone are the wise and prudent who are like that. They earn the respect in this world as well, the glory hereafter. 
Similarly, it's been reported by Hazrat Shaddad bin Aus in Tirmizi and Ibn Majah, the Prophet said that wise and the strong is the one who keeps inordinate appetites under control and strives for the life hereafter. And the foolish and the weak is the one who subordinates himself to sensual pleasure and hopes the best from Allah. Allahumma la taj'alla minhum. How how important being obedient and worshiping to uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. It has been reported in a tradition in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet said that if a person lies continually in prostration from the day of his birth to the day of his death, seeking the countenance of the Lord on the day of judgment, he will consider that this deed of his is worthless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with the fear of hereafter, make us all pious and righteous and help us all prepare for our eternal abode. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tabarakallazi biyadihi al-mulku wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Allazi khalaka al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala wa huwa al-azizu al-ghafur. Allah says, blessed is he in whose hands is dominion and he is over all things competent. He who created death and life to test you which of you is best indeed and he is exalted in might the forgiving allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of uh, surah al-mulk has clearly highlighted mulk that blessings are associated with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so associating blessings associating blessings with anyone other than Allah and associating blessings with anything other than Allah is what? It is polytheism. It is polytheism in the attributes of Allah. Believing in any form that possessing or having or keeping any special thing will save us from crises, from loss, illness, or any form of calamity, or possessing or keeping anything with us will be a source of prosperity, progress, and success, or will help us achieve in this world. This is all what? This is a polytheistic belief with the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that even the most sacred of things, the most sacred of things, like even a piece of a piece of uh, Prophet Sallallahu blanket or a leather, a piece of leather from his shoe, a piece of cloth from the cover of Khana Kaaba, it should not be associated with a source of blessing. We can or we may just keep anything belonging to Prophet Sallallahu like even a hair of Prophet Sallallahu we might just keep it or we might just desire to possess it for the sake of his love or for the sake of closeness, but associating the concept of barakah and associating blessings is what it is shirk and it is polytheism. Believing that if the coffin is soaked in the water of Zamzam, it will cause us uh, it will cause us to escape the torments of the Qabr. No, nothing of the sort. Or burying the Quran with the deceased will cause an ease in the stay of the grave. These are all false polytheistic assumptions, and we need to seriously stay away from all these concepts. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in this verse number two, he says that he is al hayyul qayyum and uh, he himself, he has created life and death. And the purpose of creating life and death is this, that it is a trial. This stay, this stay in this world is what a trial. Remember, we were not given this life. We were not sent on the earth and provided with everything just for a mock show. No, this is not uh, this is not a drama that people are going to come and they're going to perform their roles and they're going to return. No, no, this stay in this life of this world is what it is a trial. And the purpose of the trial is what? To see who is righteous. Ahsanu amala. Allah Himself, He is Mosin. He has 
taught us how to be a Muslim and how to do Ahsanu Amala. Allah has shown us all the traits of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was what? Who was the he was the mercy of the whole of the universe. And he has proven, he has told all of us, instructed all of us, Uswatun Hasanatun, that if you want to be a Mohsin, then it is a model of excellence for you is the uh, is the is the model of Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on teaching us in Quran the traits of Mohsanin, as we learn according to a tradition in Bukhari, that Prophet was asked, Man Ahsan, that what is goodness, what are good deeds, what are the righteous deeds? And Prophet told that that you offer your salah that you offer your salah as if you are seeing your Lord. And if you cannot acquire and achieve this state of mind, that if you cannot acquire this frame of mind, that you are seeing your Lord, that at least acquire this state of mind and frame of mind, that your Lord is seeing you. And similarly, in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us another method of sheer and ultimate goodness and piety is, Ya yuhlazina amanu, la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal asa. So trying to excel favor and uh, tell that they uh, you you excise a favor on a person and when after you spend charity, do not waste all your charity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us help us learn all the tra all these traits of goodness and adopt them practically in our lives. And who created the seven heavens in Lair, you do not see in the creation of the most merciful any inconsistency. So return your vision to the sky. Do you see any breaks? Then return your vision twice again. Your vision will return to you humbled while it is fatigued. And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with stars and have made them from them what is thrown at the devils and have prepared for them the punishment of blaze. And for those who disbelieved in their Lord is the punishment of hell and wretched is the destination. When they are thrown in it, they hear from it a dreadful inhaling while it boils up. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. It almost bursts with rage. Every time a company is thrown into it, its keepers ask them, did there not come to you a warner? They will say, yes, a warner had come to us, but we denied and we said, Allah has not sent down anything. You are not but in a great error. They will say, if only we had been listening or reasoning, we would not be among the companions of the blaze. Regrets by the people of of hellfire will be what? We wish we had listened to the messages of Quran and Hadith, and we wish we, we regret and we wish that we had reasoned with the commandments of Quran and Hadith. They will admit their sin. So it is. So it is alienation for the companions of the place. Indeed, those who fear their Lord unseen will have forgiveness and a great reward and conceal your speech or publicize it. Indeed, he is knowing of that within the breast. Does he who created not know while he is the subtle, the acquainted? It is he who made the earth tame for you. So walk among its slope and eat of his provision, and to him is the resurrection. Do you feel secure that he who holds authority in the heaven would not cause the earth to swallow you, and suddenly it would sway? Or do you feel secure that he who holds the authority in the heaven would not send against you a storm of stones? Then you would, you would know how severe was my warning, and already had those before them denied, and how terrible was my reproach. Do they not see the birds about them with wings outspread and sometimes folded in? None holds them aloft except the most merciful. Indeed, he is of all things seen. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the different things around in the universe for us to see and to realize the power, the control, the authority, the sovereignty of Allah Almighty. Allah is saying here in our day-to-day -day observations have been quoted to help us realize the power of Allah. Like here Allah says that don't you see the birds? It is a day-to-day -day observation. We throw a ball and it comes down. We throw a coin and it comes down. And this is because of what? This is because of gravity of the earth. But we see that the bird, it flies and it goes on flying higher and higher. Who made it that way? How was it made that way? And who taught the bird to fly? You know what? We humans, we learned how to make the aeroplanes by seeing and by looking at the birds. We know that the bones of the birds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the bones of the birds, they are extremely light as compared to the animals, which helps them fly easy. Scientists today, seeing this, they, they, they today, wanna, they use one of the lightest metals, aluminum, to make the aeroplanes. And the feathers of the birds, they are extremely smooth. And to make them even more smoother, they are lubricated with oil from tiny glands under the, under the wings. This is all to do what? To decrease the resistance of the air and to decrease the friction. Similarly, the shape of the head and the shape of the body of the birds is all streamlined. And this further decreases the air resistance. And this will help in the speed of the flight and it will prevent the heating because of friction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made it an instinct. It, Allah has made it an instinct for the bird to fly. It just needs to spread the wings and it starts moving it up and down. And who teaches the who teaches the nestling how to fly? We, when we start learning how to drive, we need to go to the driving schools and we need an instructor to teach us how to, uh, how to drive our own cars. But the small little nestling in the nest, just, it is an instinct for him. It is an instinct for the nestling. It just spreads the wings and it just starts moving up and down. And there, there is a thrust of the air, the upward thrust of the air, and the bird starts rising up. Remember, Allah is the best biologist. He is the best zoologist. He is the best physicist. Rabbana, innana amanna, faghfir lana zunubana, wakina azab nar or who is it that could be an army for you to aid you other than the most merciful? The disbelievers are not but in delusion. Or who is it that could provide for you if, you would, if he withheld his provisions, but they have persisted in insolence and aversion? Then is the one who walks fallen on his face better guided or the one who walks erect on a straight path? Allahumma ihdina siratul mustaqeem. Say, it is he who has produced you and made for you hearing and vision and hearts. Little are you grateful. Rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi basri nura wa aini يميني نورا ويسار نورا وفوق نورا وتحت نورا وإمام نورا اللهم اجعل في في اللهم اجعل في نورا say it is he who has multiplied you throughout the earth and to whom you will be gathered and they say when is this promise if you should be truthful say the knowledge is only with Allah and I am only a clear warner but when they see it approaching, the faces of those who disbelieved will be distressed and it will be said, this is that for which you used to call. Say, have you considered whether Allah should cause my death and those with me or have mercy upon us? Who can protect who can protect the disbelievers from a painful punishment? Allah save us all from this painful punishment. Say, he is the most merciful. We have believed in him and upon him we have relied. And you will come to know who is that, who is, it is that is in the clear error. Say, have you considered if your water was to become sunken into the earth, then who could bring you the flowing waters? 
no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do realize your powers your authorities your controls your sovereignty your being the Malik your middeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us surrender help us submit help us submit to your orders humbly obediently in perseverance and persistence of faith Ya muqallib al-qalubi sabbit qalbi ala dinik. Ya musarrif al-qalubi swarrif qalbi ala tu'a'atik. 